on ground, uh, which uh, the SA will be able to furnish us with uh, information about what the ministry is doing. Uh, what change, what development are we seeing in that area? Uh, are more people getting aware of these new policies? How are they implementing them? How is it helping in terms of growth, uh, developmental growth in Nigeria? Uh, but as we expect him, let's get to hear some updates uh, in terms of the, the latest coming from the Ministry of Mines and Steel. Can you help us with that? Yes, uh, I mean, the, the new administration is confronted, of course, you know, when they came into uh, power in 2015, uh, was confronted with huge financial burden um, caused by the federal revenue, uh, which usually is sourced from proceeds from oil. However, due to reduction in oil proceeds, there's been this clamor to increase non-oil sector. True. And one of the key areas to increase, of course, will be mines and steel. Um, actually, we, the vision of the Nigerian government is to have mice and steel contribute about 10% to GDP by 2020. But as of today, the, the sector can only contribute 0.46%. Uh, that is less than 1%. And it's a sector that is arguably um, enough to, to generate the resources that we need and then begin to, to, to reduce over-reliance yeah. on oil prices. And how do we reverse this trend? How do we ensure that this trend will produce the, um, the, the, the requisite 10% uh, contribution to, to, to GDP. There are challenges with this sector. One of the, one of the challenges will be financing. People don't talk about mines and steel investment in mines and steel. What does it really put? What, how will it produce? How will it tra tra translate mm. to reduction of poverty? Arguably, if Nigeria, in all the states of Nigeria, there are adequate resources that can be tapped from. But with the advent of oil, there's been that, uh, you know, we have a national cake. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to, to waste much of your time in terms of digging into Mother Earth to generate other resources. If we'll invest, if we'll invest as a government, with the new, one, maybe one of the proposals to the new government, of course, that's what they are pursuing, to generate enough resource from the mines and steel sector um, which will arguably contribute up to 10% to the GDP. Once we get that done, there's going to be a, a spillover effect. Let's take an example in Kogi State. We have the, the, we have the mighty, mighty industry, um, the Ajakuta Steel. That is enough to, come, to recruit up to 120 workers in Nigeria. You know, I, I was going through that facility someday, a few months ago, and somebody said to me, this facility can accommodate 120 engineers. Mm. 120 engineers, minus administrative staff, minus protocol staff, minus security officials, minus the spillover. I mean, when you talk about people who sell food around the, the area, you know, people who sell oranges or water or whatever in that vicinity. It, that sector, only in Kogi State, pulling out 120,000 engineers mm. will, be, will, will be close to reducing uh, poverty, not just for Kogi State, but, uh, but across that value chain. The value chain that MISA Steel will produce eventually will be sufficient to build upon by next year. We can begin to look at um, what we can do next year in, uh, in two years from now. What can we do three years from now? So, like I said, funding challenge has been identified as a reason for inability to embark on the detailed work that the ministry uh, does want to do. But again, um, there's need to do a lot of, a lot of interrogation. Uh, if you go to Edo, Edo for example, uh, what's it called? Um, Dangote, I just moved there a few months ago, a few, about a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in, a, in, in, a, in an area, I think, Obila, where you have enough mineral resource. And I tell you, Dangote is going to put a lot of resource from that community. Mm -hmm. So whatever, if government invests in that architecture, so there's a lot of work that the ministry, the sector, can really contribute in terms of reduction of poverty, in terms of moving Nigeria forward. You know, you said something about every state having one or two solid minerals that yes. they, they can use to drive and grow the state itself. And it, for me, I've always really been just concerned on why we have so focused on just oil that we have refused to develop, you know, this other aspect of us. And like you mentioned, the drive is to at least help 
add 10 percent if we're looking at our yes. gdp which we haven't gained so much yes. from uh that uh, sector in a long while now some people have attributed it to uh the delimitation from the constitution saying that is on the exclusive list and it, the, the federal government and the federal might yes. is the one in charge basically of all of this so even if we're looking at states you mentioned nasawa you mentioned Kogi, you can go to any you can go to plateau and say oh, they have all of these minerals buried in there but if it's so tied to the federal government on the exclusive list would it give the states enough right to 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 want to help promote and drive all of these uh minerals they have in their own state that, that's something i would love to ask him and see if there are any if there uh, are any policy, policy yeah. in but that that's direction. not what the ministry can do the ministry cannot do what is outside of the purview yeah. they can't take the, the ministry does not have the power to take that off the uh, uh, executive uh, the the, the, um, the exclusive list because it's not concurrent that's what we talk about um the involvement of local administration mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, all of this devolution of powers uh, reducing the, 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 the concentration of um, uh, what the federal government need to do as, as an exclusive right to breaking it down. One of them is right to resource control. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a buzzword I know. For, for quite some time. We started in an in, in, in oil-rich area of Niger Delta. Resource control. I, I, I did some piece sometime where we tried to look at um, how we can truly move forward. You, you are right with your submission. If we break down might and steel and have local, sub-national level, having control, mm -hmm. then we can truly explore. Years ago, in the 60s, agriculture was driving the economy of this country. And the North, arguably, was contributing more to the GDP because all of the things that you need for agriculture was domiciled in, those, in that area of the country. But as of this moment, it is oil crude oil, and it's domiciled in Niger Delta. So if we de-emphasize on, on oil resource, mm -hmm. the crisis in Niger Delta, of course, will be solved. States will have more money, although Nasarawa, Kogi, and elsewhere can then think inward. At this moment, no one is thinking inward. We are relying on the federal government, the almighty federal government, to, to allocate resource. Mm -hmm. And again, that is a bane of the development of the, of the mineral sector, of the, of the mines and steel, because there is poor financing. Oil resource is more like, you know, people will say it's a national cake. It's, to an extent, it's free money. We need to move forward to de-emphasizing this free money and making state think critically, look inward, look at the resource that can move their state forward, and then they can develop. We can take, I, I, people will say, don't, don't use model elsewhere. Don't try to use the United States. Don't try to do that. In the United States, for example, all your resources for the states that own it, Alaska and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And the money is allocated to citizens in those, in those states. But it doesn't happen in Nigeria. So if money, allo if all your resources, for example, are located to people in, 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 the, in those states, I'm sure by now Kogi would have woken up. To say, no, we have a good amount of resources. Enough. Enough to feed the people of Kogi state. We won't do agriculture. We will do natural, we will do mice and steel, we will do natural, we will do res um, resource on the ground. We are going to concentrate on all of the resources that God has blessed us with. We are going to invest in that. All we need to do is buy food where they buy us. You know those days we used to have yeah. what they call trade by butter. Buy so butter. give me your food, I'm, going to, I'm ready to buy your food, but I have my own resource that you need. So, but as of this moment, we, we are not operating that scenario. We are still selling some kind of raw material. We don't have to sell raw material. We need a finished product. Mm. And all of these are finished products. Yeah, what, is, what is Switzerland? How people talk about Switzerland. Switzerland is but a country without any resource. You know, you go around, you, you go around Geneva or, or, or Bern or, 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 Geneva, uh, uh, well, uh, or Zurich, you, you are not going to see concrete of what should move a country forward. But they rely on resources in Zambia to, to, to develop their own country. And the Zambians cannot even develop their own. Because they have something to give in exchange for that. The peace. They have something. Is in, it in the bank? In terms of their human capital development, in terms of how they have managed to stabilize their economy, create wealth for themselves, they can exchange all of that for, for what we give for. I mean, if you even look at it, they come with the big industries and come with their ideas and have the time go on with their exploitation. I'm not saying just Switzerland. I was talking with a colleague of mine who say, even if you look at it, there's some sort of enslavement still going on. Yeah. We deal with the environmental issues. They come there and it seems like they are creating jobs for us. But at the end of the day, if you 
you look at it, it's mere great gift. I wish you can. I wish we can have some time in the future where we interrogate um, resource wealth transfer. Mm -hmm. You know, when you if I take a hundred thousand dollars from you, and I give you back like ten thousand dollars, you get excited because you don't know the worth of what I'm taking from you. So that's the challenge with Nigeria and elsewhere in Africa. We do not have the capacity to transform resource material or I mean raw materials to finished product. You talk about cocoa. And when, when you, you, you are excited, again, talking about um, uh, Switzerland, they, people, most people like me will say that they have the best chocolate in the world. Mm -hmm. There is no cocoa planted anywhere in Switzerland. Uh, I don't know, but I haven't seen. I mean, well, they get uh, it from Africa. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, mean, I just want to be very sure because I I I move around uh, Swiss to, uh, to Zurich or to uh, uh, Salzburg from from Austria. There is no plantation of cocoa, but they are the highest producer, uh, the, the highest country with the highest number of chocolate. Where is Ghana? Where is Nigeria? In the seventies, cocoa used to be the best of the land, and they are still there. Those cocoa are there. They are getting rough in our farms. We can't even transform them from that main resource. I mean, that's agriculture focus. But again, moving to, to, to mineral resource and um, uh, mice and steel, it's the same thing. It's the same challenge. It's the same trajectory. Oh, apparently, it's a challenge. If you're looking at a country that is blessed with so many varieties of solid minerals, looking at gold, iron ore, coal, uranium, bitumen. Just name all. Uh, we can go on and on talking about them. I, I recall a report by Nati. Uh, there was, was it 2014, 2015 report where they were looking at the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative. And it says solid mineral sector contributed only about 55.82 billion naira to the federal government, accounting for a mere 4% of the country's total national export earning for the period. And it, it got quite a number of people concern. I, I wish our guest was here already to, to, to present us with a new figure, if there's any improvement, any considerable improvement. I recall some time back on Buhari Meter program where we had him on the program. He was looking, uh, we brought the matter of Ajio Kuta. He said, okay, he's been tied in litigations and court uh, issues for a while. So that grounded it. But now that uh, we've had that one uh, settled, what work is going on to help grow the sector even more what are other states really doing you know putting all of these things and telling nigerians okay we're seeing some if you're looking at the, the that sector is one or very unorganized sector where people are we don't have proper account and documentation of the number of miners that we have i mean you can go from niger state to zamfara state to somewhere in the middle belt or, or the eastern part of nigeria people just do the things that they like they go a few few years back, I remember Connected Development was following following a project about miners yeah, in, was in, mm -hmm. in Niger State and Zafara due to lead poisoning. People were going there, doing their own thing, trying to extract it from the earth. And it was poisoning their water and poisoning their land. Mm -hmm. And we started asking a lot of questions. Aren't they documented? Isn't there a regulation? Isn't there a policy to bring all of these people together, set up a structure in which the government can monitor what is being done and also taxes will be paid at the end of the month? So there are a lot of areas when it comes to mines and steel that I, I, I hope he gets to join us before the show is over. Yes, to I, I, I hope so too. I, I'm, I'm actually positive that um, it will join us before the end of the show because there's a lot of information we need to get to, mm. to let me use the word to extract from him and for to, to inform our citizens on what is that is going on. Yeah. Um, mice and steel, arguably, it, it, I wish we can. Okay, now let's take it from here. The oil resource, the oil, um, the crude oil, mm -hmm. is found in largely Niger Delta states, uh, including Imo, Abia from the southeast mm -hmm. and Co, and virtually all of those in the in the south south and um, uh, Ondo in the southwest. Of course, we are, we, there's, there's some level of tracking in enough uh, with the Meduguri University guys with the story you heard about Boko Haram. The question is, there is, there is a product, a natural resource, domicile, in every state of this country. If we explore all of this, we are not going to have Niger Delta Avenger. Because if, oh yes, if, if you're fighting over oil, then iron ore can take over. All over the world, there's industrialization. We have, we have, abundant supply in order to take over we, we have not, we have we not even do, tapped we them. Get to well, well, we have not we even tapped them. That was the way in 1953 we started with oil. We thought that, oh, ah, excited, we're happy. We found oil in OD. 
It started small, gradually, pull up. Before you know what's happening, it became the main thing. See, the reason why it became the center of attraction, if you check before the, the, the revenue allocation then, it was states who were producing this, who was bringing the money to the center, who were giving more derivation. And that's what led to the 30% derivation that the oil, um, the oil rich state agitated for during the days of um, James C. Bore and co. That all of these big work gone about, you know, we need resource control. Resource control is one of restructuring statements that is ongoing as of today. Resource control is not about oil. It's about resources in your domain, having control over them. And if we do have control over those resources, we are going to have a lot of development across the states. I, I, I appreciate the argument about having control over resources in your domain. But then, even at that, you still need to have a legal framework that you work with, particularly if we're looking at mines and steel. Because right now, when we talk about it, everybody's just thinking oil, you know. If we're looking at Nasarawa State, we're looking at Kogi, we're looking at Plato, we're looking at... In all we're the trying states. to look at all what they have. And yes. it's okay, there's a, a legal framework regulating and guiding all you do. But yes, states would also... Would, would that even work? I don't think that's working with expression on your face. Uh, from uh, the uh, national level. If, when states are in control, they are in control. You're saying the federal might has no say in it. I don't think it can work. Maybe moving from the exclusive to the concurrent, where we can have the federal and state. Yes, collaboration. And what do you even need? Aside if, from if we must a truly... certain percentage that goes to the states. No, if we reverse you know, that. I think what we need to do, that's not of opinion, is to reverse the trend of federal government allocated to state, rather less state allocated to federal government. Okay. What the point we need to get to is for state of pay royalty. Mm. If if you explore your mineral and it's a hundred percent, you pay fifty percent. You pay fifty percent to the federal government. The federal government can have sufficient amount of money to then run defense and other critical areas to safeguard the territory of Nigeria. Then the state can then concentrate on those resources so that it can be beneficial to the local people. If you go to, uh, if you explore minerals from the earth, there are implications. You may have in the future earthquake or landslide, what you have now in Filipino and all of those areas. You may have natural disasters. So if, if those people are going to have those side effects or, uh, or, or natural effects, they need to also begin to, to also enjoy from, that, from the booty that comes from it. So if you take, for example, the, if, you, if you circle out the Niger Delta, currently, the, 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 the rivers or whatever, the aquatic animals are almost dead. They spill. To today we are still talking about the, 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 the UNEP report about the cleaning of Oguni. It's still a subject of controversy whether or not the federal government is ready to clean it up. Clean up Oguni. There was an effect. If the, look, if the state was in charge of an issue, they probably would have put measures in place. People that the, 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 the natural... The oil companies were responsible to at the national level do not need to suffer from the degrading effect of what was going on at that local level. OD, at the time, was not inhabited. People wouldn't live there. I was somewhere in Bayelsa, and somebody said to me, just wait, let the rain fall. And somehow the rain actually fell on that one of those three days I was there. You know what? You put a basin out, clean basin. You're going to see the water coming in. They are, they are black. And that happened in rivers too recently. Where everywhere you just have your clothes on, then the next thing is that your white clothing turns black. Mm. So, which means there is no pollution has taken over the environment. So, how will the people enjoy? There is no health facility. There is no, there is no immunity in place. If that happens somewhere in the States, the state, the, the, and I'm talking about the state, in the United States, rivers still will pay dearly for it. But... But the no, challenge. No. Well, there, there are lots of there, there are lots of issues and, and areas of concern. Really, if we're looking generally at the extractive industry, and that the, what you mentioned, I know some time back we did talk about it for a long time. The pollution level of pollution. We were looking also at the role of the oil companies if they're the ones. Gas flaring is still going on. There's a still going on. Still that big. is limiting it, and there's a fine too. But the fine is too 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 minimal, too inconsequential so for you them. You can pay. How many of them even pay it at the end of the day? Yeah. What would the government say they get 
from the fines paid by the international oil companies uh, due to the flaring that goes on. How many of them are really involved? Isn't that why Shell is involved in the cleanup of Ogoni land? That they are not even, we are not even sure so they're they going to do it. So many of those <laughs> issues. Buhari Mita to note down, particularly the oil and um, solid mineral sector, and take back uh, to the government, would love, love, love to hear your take. If you want to expand beyond that to the extractive industry, uh, you're welcome to share with us. Remember, it's the Buhari Nita Radio Town Hall program, and our focus today is on the solid mineral sector. Call 9 951 or 0809-5974-869 or 0803-123-0293 080-00A Nigeria Info. You can also send us messages. You can text to 32351. You can tweet at Nigeria Info ABJ or you can send it via WhatsApp to 0809-9930137. Do we have someone waiting? Hello? Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, my name is Mike Change Advocate. Mike Change Advocate, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we should our guests in the studio. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, one thing I want to contribute as to the area you talk about that uh, the IOC, mm. the national power companies, about uh, government officials are interested, more interested in, in the fines they charge mm. instead of addressing the real issues. The same thing is going on with our communication, telecommunications. Mm. Compliance, well, we're talking about compliance with set down rules is lacking in our country. Like, what, what, I, what I mean by this is the telecoms. Issues of physical registration are on the rest. Instead of forcing them to comply, they are finding them. And then the issue of the national security check, those things are put to us as a measure. They, they don't care about it. The thing that is what is playing out in the oil the, 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 the environmental hazards and all of that, like you said, all the pollution around the mm-hmm. rest, our people don't care about them. They talk about fines. If they would not, they would pay these fines. And what they are doing with this money of the fines, we don't know. So I don't know. We, 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 there's a whole lot of issues for us to talk about all the things that engage in this. All right, thank you so much uh, for chipping in, and I uh, would love to hear from others also. Hello. Hello, Tim. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Crystal clear. Yes, I can. Good evening. I greet you. Yeah. Thank you. Sir, you are welcome. Thank you so much, sir. My name, my name is Osmo Yemech Goodman. I am a sir. Sir, you have spoken very, very well. There is no need, uh, there is no need to say and we, you know, we don't know what Nigeria problem is. We already know people that are here in the country to, to, to a standstill. There is nothing that will bring this country out of uh, 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 the department we found ourselves. The current system of government we are running. It is only true and physical federalism is the answer to Nigerian problem. I don't see the reason why some people will be against this illusion uh, of power. It's just control. And say percentage of government. There is no state in this country that doesn't have that. Doesn't have that. But that is not endowed with national resources. But some group, a section of the country will, will use hands and feet and hold what does not belong to you. A state like this state is far richer than Niger Delta. Mm-hmm. I keep saying it. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, how to do and this good technology. We should take it and start to work. Mm. Like a, a state that, 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 that has uh, money to, to, to have the independent power. If you have enough, you can say to state that they don't have. Mm. Once we have the, this very system of government, this this present one we are, we are running today, you see things start to move. Like in Abuja here, you see people coming from different states in Abuja, thinking that right. this is where they will have their, this, uh, uh, their, their uh, uh, great passion or whatever. But, but once we start this, Hello, Ken, are you still there? Yeah, you have 30 okay. seconds left. Yeah. Once we have this system, this is too bad. You see, the people will start going back to the state because they have to explore what they have. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Austin. Uh, you know, I always smile when people say things like, oh, Kogi State is richer than the Niger Delta. If you have gold buried in your backyard and you don't know it's there, yeah, you poor. haven't extracted it, you haven't done anything with it, you're as poor as poor can get. But then if you even look at the Niger Delta that we talk about, where the oil is from, how better are they from any other region in Nigeria? 
So it's a problem that is bigger than just the region of where we're getting certain things come out from to looking at policies also by government and looking at uh, laws put in place by state and looking at also the political way to actually get some things done uh, to improve the lot of the people and the country at large. Let, let's get to hear some of few, few yeah, more people. I, I just wanted to quickly put out on the play that what Austin is saying is what, again, we talked about as the premierial culture. You know, there was a two, two republic um, that uh, Professor A.K. Peter A.K. had propounded. The reason why we are where we are is that we have moved from the premier culture to the civic culture. Mm. We need to get back to our community-driven development. We need people to know that their resource is being utilized by, their, by the people they are elected to power, not the president. Mm. But those at the local level that they can truly vote responsible. Okay. Well, people are waiting. Uh, let's not keep them waiting for too long. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, sir. What's your name? My name is Cosmas. Uh, All right, Cosmas, welcome uh, to the Buhari Mita Radio Town Hall program. Uh, thank you very much. Greetings to our guests and house. Thank you so uh, much, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. He's not the guest, actually. He is co anchoring the Radio Town Hall program with me. The guest didn't show up. Okay, okay. Uh, it is because they will say that they won't be able to bear it. If they, don't, they have not packaged themselves to come and lie to us. The problem is that uh, our leaders are lazy. They are lazy, very lazy that they don't want to look for long-term investment. They are looking for the one they can just scoop and make fast money. And if tomorrow already no more there, I tell you, these are the things you are never seen with quality. Okay, tell me, why are they looking for anywhere where there is a uh, fire zone like a book Why are they looking for here by this time? Where they are asking you to go out to, you know, where they are. It's a lot of things. I don't know, I don't know. I think that's what I have to say. Mm. I just see things the way they want to. If one year was not found in that place, I think things will fall in place. How can you be running away from your whole reason I'm going for where you don't have anything? Thank mm. you. Thank you very much. Uh, someone says maybe they were concerned. I would ask him about the 700 million Naira website, which is the recent controversy uh, clouding uh, the ministry. Oh, <laughs> my. <laughs> they were there was no way we were going to go there. Maybe we would have asked him to clarify, but it was not going to be the crux of our conversation, though. Uh, I don't know why uh, he refused to show up, but it's quite unfortunate. Let's hope we can get the minister in tomorrow. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, welcome. Uh, thank you. Talking about this, uh, uh, people talking about the, the uh, going to regional uh, uh, states, mm. you know. This is uh, what we have been clamoring for in the 60s. Yeah, when you get states, some people want additional states. Even when you go back because to the you job, brought the restructuring up. That's why you're seeing this phone call. Why is it in the first place? What brings the issue of, uh, you know, uh, 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 the discontinuity of the, of the regional uh, government in the 60s? It's because of this agitation, uh, agitation that uh, some people are dominating more than the others. That is why they present the, 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 the issue. So the problem now is that even look what, what the, the only thing we can talk of is how to give time and uh, encourage other 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 sectors of economy to to proper and have a proper management. My own concern is that this lack of management. Mm. All this while, all this while we have been having resources. Even we have been making lot of where is the money? Trillions and trillions of dollars have come out of the oil. Where where where, where do we use it for? What is the use today? Because the clamoring, you continue to clamor just like we are clamoring for more state, additional states, going back to regional. You still, it's a human factor. You still have got it. has no end. All right. The only thing is how to manage the ones we have. That's my own thing. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very, very much. Hello. Hello, Kim. You're welcome. Yeah, my name is Chinedu. I'm calling from Lifestyle. Chinedu, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I don't have much to say, but the little thing I want to contribute is that we have missed the fact. Since the uh, team, if you are going to Lagos and you pass from Abuja here, you find yourself in Portacos and you are still heading to Bayelsa, the best thing to do is to do your call and look for the way that goes to the that goes to Lagos. So it's for Nigeria to march break and find the way that will lead us to where we want to be. And the next time, 
we invite anybody who didn't come, we should subpoena the person. I think that is the argument that we use to bring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you be, because you are a, because you are a judge or a justice of a, your own right, Abi, right, to subpoena to subpoena the minister of mines and steel for not coming to our radio. We expect him tomorrow. Though. Oh, we expect we are expecting the minister on this program tomorrow. His essay on media. Uh, yeah, uh, that's supposed to come in today. Supposed to come in today. Schedule look too tight. Looks crazy, but let's hope, let's hope that the minister joins us. Mr. K. Fayemi joins us yes. tomorrow. He's a super gentleman. I'm it's sure he will be here tomorrow to answer some of those questions that have been brought to, to the fore. Mm -hmm. uh, Joshua from Lube says, I went to Joss two weeks ago. Before getting to Joss, I saw multitudes gathering and I was told they were mining tin and the buyers are there to buy, which I know is illegal. What is being done about that? Well, valid question you are asking, which is a question a lot of people ask when it comes to illegal mining of uh, operation that is going on everywhere from Zamfara to the other end of the country. You get to see illegal mining going on. And uh, you also want to wonder what is the... Uh, what they call the mineral sector governance, the legal framework, regulation around the sector. Those are real issues and real concerns. And I'll to also look at new policies introduced to see how we can strengthen that particular sector. And you, know, you, know, you know what, Kim? You know, if you, if you interrogate that further, you want to find out why do people do engage in illegal activities? They don't know it's illegal. There's no law forbidding them that, uh, per that's se. Probably one. Then two, you want to also find out whether... Because the state do not have control over them, and that happened at the state level, so it just allowed to happen. Mm. I remember when I was still in school, tantalite was a big business in Jos. Everybody was going out, climbing mountains, you know, extracting them, selling them. A lot of people made money back then. And then there, there was, a, I think, a, a regulation of some sort came, trying to organize it, and the number of people dropped. Mm. To to a large extent, mm. it's still big business. But you tell you that when you have a largely unregulated sector, too many people too can many make wealth yeah. for themselves, and nothing is going to the state. So if you tell me a state is rich that it has something sitting there and it's not making anything out of it, that you're not using it. You're as poor as not having it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I think it's time for one or two more phone calls. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, my dear info. Yes, sir. You're correct. Okay. This is Jerry from Buari. Jerry, welcome to the Buari Meter Radio yeah. Town Hall program. I think we are getting it all wrong. It's not as if the people change the system from what it used to be. The military, when they came in, unilaterally changed it. It was just done by one or two people. And that is why people are clamoring. If we can change it to what we agreed on, it will turn out fine. I think that is the main issue. The last but one speaker got it totally wrong when he was saying we changed it on our own. And no, it was just done by the military. One of, even the constitution we are running now was done by them, not by the people. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And uh, I think a lot of people decided to look at other issues. It went past solid minerals, but it's okay. Uh, seeing that our guest stood us up on the show, would naturally expect it to go this way. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, let's take one or two more. Hello. Thank you very much. And let's read a few comments before we wrap up. Uh, let's see here. I wonder why they call the youth in the Niger Delta who are oil bunkering criminals when in just and other places is free for every person. I farm uh, there. Uh, the problem Nigeria is facing, like of unfortunate okay, government policy, tribalism, nepotism. Soon there will be a revolution. Okay, okay. You haven't addressed one area. Just okay, we, we have heard you. You two are involved in. Okay, Afa, thank you very, very much. We're all over the place with this, but let's wrap up. This. But at least the, the comment was very critical when you talk about when you when you you look at illegal miners or illegal refiners mm. are both criminal. True. But when you look at certain area in terms of um, mineral resource or mines and steel, those who engage in illegal activity in that sector are not really tagged the same way and, and they're not being pursued. You know why? Because we're not tapping our money from that, mm -hmm. from that sector. So oil is our main stay at the moment. So anyone that, that evades the, the progress and growth of that sector will be cracked down and become the enemy, enemy of the state. So we, let us all get to the point. I think the views 
um, raised by uh, Jerry, Chinedu, Cosmos, and Co. suggests that in order to strengthen this sector, there is need to change, to, to interrogate our structure so that the local resources can actually be, be, be adequately focused. So the, there will be local ownership of those resources and then everyone goes home happy mm. and let the state pay royalty to the center.